or a life ministries come out of the world. Messiah people seek the truth. Hello, everybody. It's Paul Nisa with Torah Life Ministries. Thank you for watching. I have uh, a comment I want to reply to today in one of my videos. I've been wanting to do this for a while, and I think now's a good time to do this. The fellow starts off by sending me a scripture, Romans 7, 6. Uh, but now we are released from the law, having died to that which held us captive, so that we serve in a new way of the spirit and not in the old way of the written code. And so that was Romans 7, 6. I'm not sure what translation he read. Uh, I'm going to be looking at it today in, in my translation, which is uh, the Hebraic root scriptures. And it says, but now we have been set free from the penalty of the Torah, having died to that in which we were held. So as for us to serve in the newness of the spirit and not in oldness of the letter. Okay, so uh, that's the translation I'm going to uh, choose to look at here. And before I go that, let me get to his comment. So his comment says, when I look through your videos, you have much to say about what we must do and put little emphasis on the scriptural truths of the gospel. Our Savior, Yeshua, finished work on the cross. Uh, he is my righteousness. Obedience is important, but how is it possible for sinful man to do anything good? Only through uh, the sanctifying work of the Rahadak Kodesh, the Holy Spirit. Why don't you teach these things? You blast Christians who speak this way as lovers of sin. Far be it, but the right view of self is with great humility. As the hem goes, prone to wander, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. Praise God that the author of faith is also a perfecter. And then he goes on to quote Philippians 1, 6, which says, And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Yeshua, our Messiah. And he said, Jesus Christ. Uh, and then he says, You say you can't pick and choose which commands we keep. When you yourself do the same things, return to sound doctrine. Okay, uh, so uh, the fellow here basically is calling the doctrine or or, or what I'm, I'm, I'm claiming uh, to be doctrine as, as unsound, unsound, uh, unsound doctrine. Uh, so let's read this uh, from several different viewpoints. He also goes to say in another video, is our personal testimony more effective in changing lives than the word of our creator? And... I think we're in agreement there. Uh, personal testimony is a great result of uh, the confirmation through the word of our creator. And I think whatever our opinion is, whatever we think about something, it comes down uh, to what scripture says, not what we think or we want to believe. So let's look at what scripture says about these things. Also, as for this person's claims of, of the sound doctrine and the idea of sound doctrine, look, the Bible says in uh, in, in the scriptures, it goes ahead and says in John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. That's what the word of our creator says. If you love me, keep my commandments. Now, I am, uh, I take a gentle approach to this because I know a lot of people say, if you're not keeping the commandments of our creator, you don't love me. I don't take that approach because I say, uh, without adding to scripture, the idea behind this is according to how much your eyes have been opened. If you love me, keep my commandments. I know many, many, many Christians that do not keep the commandments and truly love our creator. They would, in fact, die for our creator and they don't keep the commandments. So I am not saying uh, sinners don't love our creator. I am not saying uh, people that uh, keep uh, don't keep the commandments are not saved. You know, I do believe people's hearts and desire uh, to uh, love our creator is wonderful. However, we have to look at what the word of our creator says. And the word of our creator says, yes, we are saved through uh, the blood of Yeshua who died for us. Hallelujah. We're not supposed to keep uh, the Torah, the guidelines and instructions of our creator to be saved. That didn't work. The only way we could have salvation and an opportunity at this is through, our, through, through Yeshua dying for us. Now, when we look at that and think about that, so why do we need to keep the guidelines and instructions of our creator? So I don't know the person that wrote this comment to me if they have children, uh, but what is the most pleasing things to a father? Well, for one, children that listen and obey. What is going to keep the child as safe as possible? Children that listen and obey. 
What is our desire of the creator for us? Well, he tells us, of course, to go and make disciples and, and so on, but uh, he wants us to listen and obey him. There's no doubt all throughout the scriptures, it says uh, how we are to live our lives and carry ourselves as believers. And yes, there's only one who's perfect that can do it all. But I get a little, uh, I don't know what the right word is, uh, but when, when I see so-called believers or Christians struggling to keep 10 of the commandments, when there are in fact over 600 and, and, and commandments, it makes you think. They're struggling for 10, not even struggling for 10, saying you can't keep 10. <laughs> what about the rest? I have other videos that are talking about this, but I also know that uh, Christians do keep the majority of the commandments in the Bible, whether they know it or not. So they're just doing it. And that's, that's a good thing. Uh, the real question is the ones that have been brought to their attention that they're not keeping. Why aren't they keeping those? And what is the reason keeping them? Now, if it's ignorance or, or deception, okay. I'm not saying there should be an excuse, and I'm not saying there isn't consequence of breaking the commandments. But if you just don't know what you're doing, that's wrong. Like I know people that celebrate Christmas all the time and Easter and all these, they just don't know it's wrong. They love our creator. They just don't know. It hasn't been brought to their attention. Maybe if it has, they, they've been deceived to think that that's not good sound doctrine or something else. But the word of our creator speaks for itself. Okay? So... There is a scripture, James 4, 17, that says, to know good and not do it to him it is sin. To know good and not do it to him it is sin. So you're not saved by doing works, but if you know a creator wants us to do something and you don't do it, well, that in essence is sin. And where does it tell us in the Bible what our creator wants us to do? It tells us in the first five books of the Bible, known as the Torah, the guidelines and instructions of our creator. That's where it tells us what is good and what is righteous. And righteous comes from means from doing right, doing things right. And wickedness or sin is the opposite of that. So knowing good and not doing it is, in fact, something that is wicked or unrighteous. Again, so if we don't know, there's still consequences, uh, but it's not the same as knowing and not doing it. So the scriptures clearly tell us that uh, we need to be doing some things that a lot of people uh, are not doing and they, they think they don't have to do it. And again, a lot of it is through deception. A lot of it is through ignorance, through not understanding or reading the word. But the word is clear on this. The word is in, there are gray areas in the word. It's, it's our thinking, you know, and, and a lot of our thinking is based on what we've been taught growing up and so on. And, you know, and I know you don't know what you don't know. I get that. And, and here's the thing. I'm not trying to open people's eyes. I'm trying to give people the word of our creator that this person calls unsound doctrine. And I, I, I want to take the point to say, well, a lot of the pastors out there that are teaching in the churches are giving unsound doctrine saying we don't have to do what the Bible calls good. I mean, we don't have to do it for salvation, but that's not to say we don't have to do it. So we speak, keep the guidelines and instructions, not because we have to. But because we want to, because we want to please our creator, because we want to trust that he knows better than we do and he's smarter than we are and he knows what's, what's good for us. Now, can we still have uh, salvation if we're not doing one of these commandments due to ignorance or due to uh, for any reason? I'll never doubt our creator and I'll never question somebody's salvation. That's between you and him. However, when it comes to doing good and not doing good and what good is, the word is clear on it. And uh, I praise Yahweh for the uh, for the scriptures of uh, uh, of, of the, the refreshing through repentance, bringing refreshing and, and, and scriptures like that, and the wonderful grace and mercy of our Creator and the example He sets for all of us. It's a wonderful uh, love that our Creator has for us, where He He gives us this mercy and grace. However, the reality of the scriptures is uh, you can't have a half gospel. And part of this gospel uh, is that there are consequences for our disobedience. And our creator says, I take no pleasure in the death of wicked people. I only want them to change from their wicked ways so they would live. So we would have life. 
So, so it's his desire for us to see these things. Now, here's the thing. I don't open your eyes. Who opened your eyes? Our creator opened your eyes. And I mean, a lot of people that have come to this understanding that, that I'm teaching, and I say, what took you so long to get it? And they said, our creator just hadn't opened my eyes yet. You know, and and I, I think it's a the most essential and important thing. And in, in a good amount of my videos, I talk about uh, the most important thing is that we accept and understand that Yeshua is who he says he is and who he claims to be. And nothing less shall we sell for than that truth. But as we keep understanding and looking at what scripture says and, and how we are to live and what it means to be a follower of Yeshua, and, and the understanding of the scriptures, well, we can't just go halfway. We have to go all the way and carry it through. And that is the difference ultimately between a believer and a make-believer. It's, 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 it's being where we're at, but looking and understanding there's going to be more. And not just giving up and saying, all the work is done. Because that's not, in fact, what it says. Now, when we look at the translations of certain things, the translation this fellow sent me, I'm not sure which Bible is from, it says in Romans 7, 6, but now we have we are released from the law, having died to which held us captive. So I often talk about the word law in scripture that's inserted to confuse people when we don't know what law is. Because there are different types of laws in scripture. But when we get down to the real meanings and understanding of the word, there is the guidelines and instructions of our creator, which are found in the first five books of the Bible, known as the Torah or the commandments. And then in the renewed covenant, there is uh, the law that the man made uh, Pharisees and sages and, and, and the Jewish people of that time, what, but adding to the commandments of our creator. And that man-made law is what our Messiah came to do away with and had a problem with. It was the man-made law. But this is not what the scripture is talking about in general anyway. Uh, in the translation I read, and a more accurate translation, it says, but now we have been set free from the penalty of the Torah. From the penalty of the Torah. And this is what people understand, need to understand. In the original covenant, uh, there was a penalty of death for doing certain things. And a wonderful Messiah came and took that penalty upon himself. And became a curse for us. And we've been set free. We have another chance. So here we are guilty as we can possibly be. For, for committing these abominable practices. That, that, that our creator warns us against. And here we are in the courtroom. And here comes a judge. And the judge says as it says in scripture. Somebody has to pay for this. Somebody's going to pay for this, this, this terrible crime that's been done. And we're guilty. And there's nothing we could say to, 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 to prove our innocence because we're not innocent. And just about the judge is going to say, well, somebody has to pay for it. What happens? Somebody steps in and says, I'm going to take that penalty. And I'm going to set you free. And he took our place on death row and died for us. And he set us free. And when he set us free, he said, you might have seen this before. You might have not. But I'm going to give you this. It is the words of my father. It is, it, it is the guidelines and instructions to live this way so you are not back in this position again. I am giving you this pass and setting you free for, so you'll get it, so you get it right. And as long as you follow these guidelines and instructions, you will not be in this courtroom again with this sentence that's about to be on you. However, if you continue to live the way you're living or you have lived in the past, if you don't follow these guidelines and instructions, you will suffer the consequences of your disobedience to these guidelines that I am giving you. That is what the word of our creator says. You know, So when it says things like uh, we are released from the law, you have to understand what law they're talking about. And then you also have to understand how they insert the word law into the Torah and the commandments. And they are not the same thing. So in many different places, uh, we have to understand that uh, everything I'm saying here it, 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 it leads to Yeshua dying for us so we would have a heart change, not so we would keep doing the things we were doing before and now justifying it. 
and using Yeshua's death as an excuse to live in sin, which is not the heart or the idea most believers have today, but it is in fact what they are doing because that's the doctrine that's been teaching out there today. And we must, we must rise up and we must follow the words of our creator. And I'll say it again. If you love me, keep my commandments according to how much our creator has opened your eyes. Some of you haven't gotten this and some of you might not get it for a while. And it's my prayer that your eyes will be opened. It's my prayer that my eyes will be opened even more and we'll get to understand these things and we'll get to know these things. And the word wouldn't just be on paper, that it would be on our heart. And we would know right from wrong. And we would do right from wrong. And we wouldn't make excuses saying, well, we're not perfect. We can't do this. We'd try even harder to do it. That's what I want people to understand. And that's what I want to understand. Repentance is a beautiful thing when it's sincere. And our creator wants our hearts. And if our hearts are sincere, when we mess up, he'll be right there to cover us, to help us. However, the scriptures are clear what's going to happen to those that are purposely living against this word and do not have a sincere, humble heart to change what they're doing. That is the difference between a, a true follower and a true believer and, and, and a non-believer. It's the humbleness and the sincerity of the heart of wanting to know more. So this person that wrote this comment to me and anyone else out there that might question uh, the, the videos that I make and the teachings that I make, uh, I want you to just think for a second the reason or the understanding behind what the scriptures are saying. If you love me, keep my commandments. And all the other scriptures uh, that, that, that we talks about a future and a hope. You know, he's not giving up on us, so we cannot give up on him. But we can't continue to accept the half gospel and expect to get the full reward. That's what has to change. And, uh, you know, I think it's a anyone that believes in Yeshua as the Messiah, the one you call Jesus, is my brother. I'm not going to be sitting here saying, well, if you do this or you don't do that, I have no right uh, to tell people uh, about things that I still struggle with myself. But I have every responsibility to tell people about the things that they don't see that I have been shown and the things that I've overcome. And I would want somebody who's overcome certain struggles uh, to help me uh, overcome the struggles I have in those same areas. I'd want people to help me with that. And I'd want somebody to help me overcome certain struggles that I'm dealing with that they've overcome. We're supposed to help each other. Iron sharpens iron. And we can only do that with a truly humble heart. And we can only do that with sincerity and, and, and repentance. I am not perfect and I don't claim to be perfect, but I don't stop there and say, well, my creator died for me, so I don't have to be perfect. No, I want to seek perfection. I want to seek doing things right. And I want to be thankful and understandful that our creator is going to cover me when I don't reach that mark on those times. But I'm also going to understand there are consequences and I'm going to try harder next time. And I believe we all need to do that. So when we look at these and we look at it in, in, in the scriptures, when it says, uh, something like this fellow quotes here, Philippians 1, 6. And I'm sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion uh, at the day of Yeshua, our, our, our wonderful Messiah. We have to understand uh, the timing of all scripture, what all scripture says, our creator's calendar, our creator's guidelines and instructions, like I already said. Most Christians are following 70 to 80 to 85 percent of the commandments in the Bible. You're already following without knowing it. I have another video listing or talking about all of the commandments, the 613 commandments that are found in the scripture, the things to do and the things to not do. And most Christians are following most of them without even knowing it. But there are a few you're not following. And there's consequences for not following those few. So we talk about those things. And why is it important to follow all of them instead of just some of them? Because when you follow some of them or you settle on following some of them, then you are, in fact, picking and choosing. And that's what many people are deciding to do out there. So this person goes on to say uh, that I say we can't pick and choose the commandments when I myself say do the same things. No, I'm not saying we should 
uh, choose and pick commandments. I'm saying it's all or none with our creator. There's no neutrality. You either seek to follow them all, to learn them all and keep them all, or you settle for the ones you've uh, conveniently kept or keep. And the other ones make excuses to say, we're no longer have to do that. or We're not under that. And that, in fact, is what's happening out there today. I do really appreciate uh, this person for reaching out. And uh, I have to step up and do a better job. If this person has seen my videos and has gotten this feeling of, of, of the, my doctrine not being sound, has gotten this feeling of me uh, bashing Christians from, from a point of anger or something else, it's, it's my issue that I appreciate this person to bring it into light. Because, again, if you believe in Yeshua the Messiah, you are my brother. You are my sister. And, 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 and how you're deciding to live your lives, whether it's through deception or on purpose, is, is secondary to believing and professing publicly that Yeshua is the Messiah. And uh, I thank you, sir, for, for calling me out on this. And I pray something I said here will open up your, uh, your, uh, your eyes to see that we have to keep or desire to keep all of the commandments, not for salvation, not because we have to, but because we want to please our Father and because we want to be safe. And also we're blessed because it says those that keep my commandments will be tremendously blessed and those that don't uh, will be cursed. And there's a difference between the two. And I want my brothers to be blessed. I want to be blessed. And the scriptures talk about a way to do that. Our creator loves us and he's given us all the information uh, of what we need to do. Now, I am aware where it says in scriptures, there's a way that each person seems right, but ends in death. And I do believe the half, half gospel that's being taught out there in the churches today uh, is uh, leading many people into deception. I'm not questioning somebody's salvation. That's not uh, uh, up to me to do. But I am uh, telling you about the deception that's going on out there. And hopefully people will look further and people will uh, look to, to study more and learn more. And if you have any comments or questions, you can post them below this video and we can talk more about it. I do live teachings online where you can talk to me personally and, and we can discuss it. Uh, but in all, we need to remember that our career says uh, he takes no pleasure in the death of wicked people. He only wants us to change from our ways, to repent to do the right things, to live righteously, to keep the Torah so we can live, so we can understand and have life. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everybody, for watching today. Until then, uh, put your comments, questions below the video. Have a great day and shalom, shalom. Come out of the world, oh my people, seek the truth, avoid the evil, learn Yahweh's ways, Torah life ministries, come out of the world, 